the story. <laughs> what? How? Well, Why? <laughs> I have a my friend Doug. Um, I put it up for sale. Um, I didn't want to, but you know, I I try to keep a rule for myself: no more than you know eight to ten surfboards. And if I'm going to get something new, I got to sell something to make room. Oh, you're lucky. My wife would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all self-imposed. Like I, we can talk about like surfing and quivers and, and, and the decisions on all that too, if you want. But I started getting into hulls and I was like, hulls and fish surf very, very differently. And I really like the way hulls uh, surf for me. Um, and I, as much as I like that fish, I, in order to get more, cause I wanted to experiment and see like more into this world of displacement hull surfing, I had to let it go. So I sold it to my friend's son who then eventually ended up with it, uh, on a trip to Indo. And I think the son let a friend use it and it, the leaf broke and it was never found. So, Never seen again. <laughs> That's <laughs> tragic, dude. The last I heard, what we have, I don't, I don't know the son. I know the father. He, he, we were talking not that long ago, actually. I was like, "Well, how, how was that board?" And he's like, "Funny you ask. <laughs> he lost at sea somewhere. I was like, oh, it's in a good place. It's in a good place." Oh man. Well, I, it's it, it's funny you're talking about your 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 obsession with hulls and how you had like moved away from other board designs. I I'm actually the the recipient of that obsession. I I actually have one of your boards, um, the the Larry Mabel Honey Badger, which was like, ah, uh, what a find. So thank you. I'm gonna say thank you over and over every time I ride that board. Well, you're welcome, and it's. On a, on a side note, I think part of my role here in, in Rhode Island, and this is just my thinking, um, but there's a handful of people like me that ride different interesting boards. It, what, it, part of what we do is we bring these different boards in, we ride them for a little bit, and then we kind of release them into the wild. And they kind of make their way out and kind of infiltrate the lineup that way. And I, so I, I see that as part of like what I do here. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that. It's, it's, you know, it reminds me of like a record collection, which, you know, young, young people won't understand anymore. But like, I remember my, my uncle gifted me his vinyl collection and it's one of the most beautiful things to, to hand along that legacy and that history. And I've seen a lot of, uh, my peers, as they get, they get older, they just like, they don't sell their boards, they gift them away, you know, and, you know, that's the same thing I, I see you as doing, like your, your evolution, your, you know, passion for learning something new in, in board design, you, you, you let the other ones go back out into the lineup. And, and who knows, you may be sitting next to somebody one day who was on your board. Um, as a matter of fact, I think one day you and I were like, uh, we were out in the lineup and we looked back towards shore and you specifically said to me, you're like, you see that guy on the beach with the purple board? That's, that's my Ryan Lovelace. That's, and I was just, do you remember that board? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was just like, wow, you know, that's kind of like the, the passing on of these, of these objects, you know, the proliferation of your, of your passion and your interest is now like floating around in the sea, you know, along with us. Well, you know, that's here. So five years ago, things were way different here. There wasn't the, the surfing infrastructure that's here now, at least with regards to what, what's called alternative surfboards. In this specific zone, there's only like two or three shops and it's, it's all mostly like big box things and big brand stuff. Um, you know, one of the things that I think is definitely informed where my surfing is now is definitely the presence of what was Mollusk and now Pilgrim and then shops like Glide. Right. Being on the East Coast. And then there's um, 
Maine Surfers Union up in uh, Maine. And recently, actually, there's uh, a new shop in Westerly called Rhode Island Surf Company. They're doing interesting things. Right. And actually, he reached out to me recently, and we're working on a collaboration. Right. Can you just like uh, briefly talk about some of that? I know that you uh, you um, texted me some images of some of the things that you're working on right now. What it, what's going on with that? Sure. Let let me back up a little bit so it can make a little sense. Right. Um, so. It, through the time I was in Brooklyn and in the early time of being here, I've always tried to experiment every now and again and try to sneak a little bit of surf imagery into a transfer. And it never worked. Like I could never get it to work. And I'm talking like on a more subliminal level where maybe at first glance you wouldn't notice that you, you know, um, a wave or a, a board or someone, you know, surfing. Um, because I didn't want it to be obvious. And I, one of the problems um, I have anyways with, with surf art, with a, with a capital S and, and a capital A, right. uh, it's just so illustrative. It, it, there's a lot, I'm not talking about all of it, but a lot of it is just not very imaginative um, in, in a way that's like really um, interesting or different. You know, a lot of it looks the same and I get why, you know, and I'm not trying to put it down, but from where I'm coming from, um, I, I needed to do something else, but I could never really get it to work um, because of the, the really big cultural associations with surfing, even for people that don't surf. There's, there's a lot of um, baggage associated with that imagery, um, good, good and bad. Um, but when one, maybe two or three years ago, I said, you know what, I'm going to do something and I'm just going to let the surfing take the show. I'm going to bring in surf imagery and I'm going to combine it with some of the old transfer imagery. I'm going to see what happens. And I, so I did, I made, uh, I didn't want to do paintings. Um, I wanted to do print because I love printmaking. Um, and I love working in multiples a lot. Um, and part of the excitement and enjoyment of doing the, the transfer paintings in, in Brooklyn was just that, that I was, you know, I was like printmaking, but like getting away with calling it a painting kind of thing. Um, but I, I started this series called the, the um, Surfy Art Edition. And it was right before the holidays. And the, the studio my wife and I were sharing up in North Kingston Every year they would have this big holiday, like a sale where everybody would open their studios and the public would come and you could have stuff for sale. And it was actually right after we bought this house. So it would have been three years ago. Um, my wife says, why don't you make something that like, you know, the average person might want. And, you know, to some artists that might be an insult, but you know, to me, I'm like, you know, that makes sense. Like, let's, let's just try to do something specifically, make multiples, make it interesting, but then make it approachable at the same time. So I came up with this, the Surfy Art Editions. I did um, images that I either shot on my phone or I uh, have this old GoPro. Every now and again, I'll just take it out and just to see what I get. You know, part of the fun of that is, is coming back to the computer and just watching it in slow-mo or frame by frame to see what kind of still images I can get from it. So I, I kind of dug through all of this imagery and then started composing and combining it with the, the some more abstract um, painterly imagery and then transferring with my same transfer process onto um, watercolored paper. Mm -hmm. And with, with this edition, I, I did a, a, a series of test prints to find kind of roughly where the color would go. And then once I decided which one was it, I would do the addition. So I would have, maybe I did an addition of eight. I would line up eight 
I did five by sevens and eight by tens. I would line up eight five by seven uh, sheets of paper and I would paint them roughly the same. And that we can, you know, the same meaning if there was a, a, a little splash of yellow in the upper left corner, there was a little splash in every one, but it was all kind of different. I wasn't um, trying to make it too much the same. I wanted each one, even though it was an addition, to still feel like it was its own thing. So if you purchased one, you were purchasing that one, not just one of eight. And, and how were they received? I sold them out. And like I had, I had none left for the, the, the big open studio thing for the event, which was the whole reason I was making them. And then I was invited to, to show them at present company uh, in New York and Brooklyn for their um, holiday sale. So I made more and sent them to New York and they did well there. And I made more for the, the show here and didn't sell a one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's interesting that like, you know, you know, we talked so much about abstraction early on in this conversation and now you're, you're, you're making a, def a definitive choice to bring in this like illustrative component that might be more um, accessible and, and, and you're finding that it is and it's being received well. So, um, well, you, what, I'm, what I'm also finding though, is that, you know, part, part of my hesitation with it is in, you know, high art, we'll say for lack of a, another term, the, the term illustration is a bad word, you know? And I always kind of backed away from it because I, I see myself as an, an artist with a capital A, you know? I wanna, I wanna show in, in galleries. But doing this, this sort of, the side project of the Surfy Art Edition has kind of opened up the possibilities of what I can do in a way that's generative. And the feedback I've received from people has been positive both here in my community in Rhode Island and with my artist friends in New York too right so in the right. I think you, ha you have to get to a certain level I think to have those illustrations have the same impact or at least for people to take them seriously it's sort of like when Martin Kippenberger did that series on a uh, hotel stationery yes amazing illustrations and I love them I like them better than his paintings and um, it's, it's just kind of, sometimes you have to work through a lot of other things to get to that point. Um, well, I, I think you're right. And I, I, part of it is, is it, for me, it had to feel like it needed to be there, not that I wanted it to be there, if that makes sense. Like the, yeah. the, the coalescing of the, the, the very obvious and kind of upfront surfing imagery which is, you can't escape, you know, it's so, the imagery of surfing is so potent. Then with how to, to do that with very obvious, you know, gestural abstraction, which at least within art has a very specific um, connection to history and a, and a specific history itself. So trying to meld those two together is, is a, not an easy feat. Yeah, I was always told to keep my art and my surfing separate, and I, I a lot of us I, were. Yeah, and I, I tried to for a number of years, and then um, it wasn't until I met Rod, who you know very well, because he curated your work down at Florida Atlantic University. He he approached me and asked if I would help curate a an exhibition about surfing and art, or artists that you know happen to maybe surf. And I I initially said hell no. I'm not going to do that. And then when I really started talking to Rod about it, um, I, I took the dive into it and I was like, well, yeah, that, that might actually be a, um, a fruitful and worthwhile thing to try. Um, but it was definitely something that I hesitated to do. And I think a lot of people, it's kind of, you know, you're told to speak less about surfing. If you talk to people about surfing who don't surf, they get bored pretty quick. Well, so, you know, when I'm saying like potent cultural, associations within surfing uh, you know a lot of that is 
the baggage I'm referring to is like the Spicoli effect yeah. and the like oh the 